Hello everyone, welcome to another week in my garden. I think summer's arrived again. Let's hope it stays with us for a bit longer this time. Um, I'm just in the courtyard. We're just finishing off putting the bedding plants in the planters. This is quite a few of them, you see the... Look at that, quite nice. Remember, if you are doing bedding in your containers, water regularly every day best if it doesn't rain hard water them feed regularly once a week minimum i think and deadhead regularly keep the deadheads coming off and they'll keep flowering and these will flower through the whole of the summer and this this little collection you can see here is oh it's not 50 percent of what we got so uh, hopefully next year or next time round we'll We'll be doing, showing you how to fill these uh, baskets and troughs and... Right, just to show you actually what you take off on your bedding look is the seed heads which are those if the plant produces lots of seeds that it will stop producing flowers so just take those off as you go dead flowers obviously because they'll have seed heads in amongst them and generally keep them tidy it looks easy now but when they're in full flower and these are really full quite hard work now we are today we're going to put some leeks in and some brassicas in We'll be going down the garden, but not just yet. It's far too hot to go down there at the moment. We may as well wait till the evening cooler air comes in and then plant them and then I'll water them and then the water will stay on the soil long. If water them in this, my old land will just set, set solid. So we'll have a cup of tea next and then later we'll go down the garden. Okay. Dianthus smell beautiful. I can smell those, well worth sitting here. Uh, I'll do some softwood cuttings next week. There's loads, I right? just sat here looking forward. I can see lavender, pyrus, ywigelia, potentilla, and that's just a little collection in front of me here. Euonymus is ready there. So we'll, we'll do those next week. I would have been doing them anyway, so we'll do them and let you see what we get up to. I'm just going to finish my cup of tea and sit in the lovely sunshine. And later on, we'll go down when it's cooled down a bit and put the leeks in and a bit of, uh, a bit of brassica seeds in. Here's your leeks up. Level them off in your hand like that. I say I do them in batches so it's easier. Just shake them down. Now this, you not need all that, you'll never get that in the ground. So just take that, take it off like that. That's, that's that done. Popping them under this piece of uh, terracotta just to keep them cool while I get ready for them. Right, here's the planter. It's just a bulb planter and that far apart I think then we just screw it round into the ground look and there's the hole there's the soil now you can see tops very dry and hard once you get down into it look you can see it's nice and moist and you can see all the manure that's rotted down underneath so that's good so we'll just do a few more then we'll show you if you just give this a twist it'll lift you a nice clean hole out so let's put another one in then we'll pop the leeks in there you go give it a good twist and then throw it out now the leeks all you do lot is just pop them in just drop them in, no problem. There you go, and then I'll just fetch the water and we'll water those in. 
There you go, look, can you see that? We just oops, fill the hole up. Fill them up, sink them down, they float up, push them back in. That's how you do your leaks. Just leave them to drain then in a day or so they'll stand themselves up no problem like they have looked down there you can see it's washed into the holes quite a bit there you go while we're down here you can see the french beans have all come up that's fine these were the backup for the ones up there but it seems we've got both lots now right I'm just going to pop this uh, broccoli in. The way I'm going to do it, we don't need a lot of broccoli. I'm going to put just 10 plants in. I'm going to put them in little group and then thin them down to one. Now broccoli doesn't like to be transplanted, so plant it where you're going to crop it and then take out the, the smaller ones. The seed for this lot is treated coated ready to go in and I'm going to pop two or three in each one of those little divots we've done down there it's also good to see where you, your seed is I don't know if you can see just two or three but they're not uh, and three more in there. What I'll do now is just cover them, try and get the soil I've taken out that's a little bit damp. I've just shown you this soil is damp underneath even though it looks powdery on top. It's one of the beauties of strong land. So here we go look. I just cover those up, don't want the stones do we? And that one. Put my big sign up so we know where they are. And I'll just give them these few a drop of water. Right, I'll just water these few in. These are the cold rabbit by the way, looking good, look nice and clean. I did put some kale in. I'll give the kale down here look you can see how the ground's cracked this is what happens when you water this sort of this heavy land so i water them again help them break the soil a bit but it is going to rain tonight anyway these will be transplanted they're only there as a, a little temporary job but this late in the evening now they should be all right and then uh, we'll transplant those as we do it now while i'm down here I'm just going to get some lettuce uh, to take up to the house and a few radish and have a quick look at the baby beetroot, see if that's, if that's ready. We might as well take that as well while we're down here. So let's have a look and see what we can do. We'll just have a look at the lettuce under this side, see how it's doing. We'll take that one and that one. As you can see, look at that cabbage there, hearting up nicely that is. Spring cabbage that'll be. That's fine. And this one, look at that. And beautiful and clean. These will just cut off, look. And then we'll lift, lift onto there. Take that dead leaf out. I always like to take the roots out with the knife. Don't take them out, they'll only rot in the ground. We don't want this. Put those in the middle. But we'll just take this one out. Look. As you can see, these are beautiful. Little gem, we know that. Cut it off. Cut that out and make sure there's no weeds obviously. Just very pleased with those cabbages, look at that. Right, we'll just fasten that down again. I'll do that in a moment. The big ones like that, they rarely need rejecting because they're far too big. Little tiny ones, they can be rejected. We'll just take those. While we're here, we'll just have a look at the beetroot, see how it's doing. The baby beetroot this is, so there's one here, look, can you see? So we'll take that one. That's 
big enough you don't want them much bigger than that that's plenty for what we want in fact now what we'll do is you just hold them like that and just twist off yeah like that if you break it off down here it'll bleed as you see it's already bleed a little bit out of there and it'll ruin the ruin the beetroot don't cut this off neither goes to the kitchen like that we'll just see if we've got one or two so one's no good that one can come ah uh, there's another one there look very small but very tasty again twist off and then we'll see what else we've got a couple more here look we'll just twist these don't these will go with salad so you don't want them very big right we're back up at the greenhouse now we're checking the boxes if you remember the boxes are for if you haven't got a garden you can grow in boxes come to do the beetroot and the beetroot is actually better in the boxes that, than it was down the garden so we'll take these out anyway we need to come out to thin them out a bit look shoot that's just right for your baby beetroot there's another one that where shall we go that one these are just fine they make a nice boiling We'll take that one as well. That'll be absolutely beautiful for the salad. I'll just take the tops out now and put them with the rest. They'll go straight to the compost heap. The other thing you need to look at these here a lot carefully. Carefully man and firm those in again. We'll have a look at the courgettes while we're here. But the, you see there's a nice cabbage there coming up beautifully, I like that. Right, there's one up. We'll take that one. You see, that would be a nice one. Some people leave the flowers on I go. This courgette has gone too far. That's close to being a marrow, that is. But we'll take it anyway. This is the result of that cold spell we had, I'm afraid. Celery's coming on nicely, but nowhere near ready yet. I'll just pop the knife there. Right, so we have a couple of nice little jam lettuce. Because you're getting so many now, you can just use the centres, and they're very, very nice. The radish is always coming now that will be coming right through the season baby beetroot is ready that will be boiled up make go nice with the salads that will courgettes i'd like to have them between those two really but they're sliced and fried in butter absolutely beautiful the radish that we put in the boxes i can't keep it in here any longer it'll be there you are, look at that. Absolutely beautiful, don't That's not bad, is it, eh? If you like radish. Just come down the garden and I see we've got, uh, we've got a mole come onto the garden. Living out in this countryside, you will get quite a few moles coming in. I do trap them. I do get rid of them and I'll, show you how I do it we always seem to catch them doing it this way I've been doing it for a number of years now and this is the way I've always done it so I'll get on with it now before you do anything with moles get some old gloves on that you've been wearing in the garden and got soil on if you haven't just rub some soil or something onto them but I keep these old gloves with the traps and then I always wear them. This is the mole trap. This is an old one that I have I've had it for years. That's the mole trap set, and we lower it into the ground like that. And the idea is the mole comes along, and you know the rest. This is a new one, exactly the same, set for a newer thing. Again, don't touch them without your gloves on. And that's that one set. There's your mole hill. Now it's no good going in and putting the trap in there, you must work your way back. It looks like he's been round here and he's making his way that way. I think the best thing to do is if you get a stick 
and poke you feel resistance all the way and then there there's no resistance up so I would say that's his run I can't feel any and there again this side no this is pretty solid here I think he came along there and then went this way so we'll put one here where I've marked it already he definitely goes that way I can feel his run there and we'll put one over there where he seems to go through under the the cage but I'm inclined to try this one I'm sure there's a run there could be one there but just keep be patient and keep going until you find it there is definitely a run there so let's set one there so this is what we'll do we'll get the trap ready and we'll open him up if he's not here we'll move to somewhere else but I'm sure he is I'm sure that's his run there it is They're a nuisance. So what we'll do, cut a nice hole. Set the trap. That trap is now set in the hole in the direction of the run. Then put a little bit of soil in. So and put some leaves around. I use leaves out in the garden if you the most important, especially if you're in a lawn, put a stick so you know where it is. Let's do the next one. I'm sure he's here somewhere. He's not very deep just here. There he is. There, look. See? There's the run, look. There's the run. So that's where the trap's, and it goes that way because that's the way he's going to come. There you are, that's the run there. Let me quickly get one in. That was set. There you go. Just put a bit of soil down. Then a little bit of... And that's that. And put a cane in. He's been enjoying himself around here. We'll put the third one, which is the new one, over there. quite deep this one but I'll have to get to it. There's the run. Can't find his other. Definitely comes in there. I think we got it at that. We'll pop the new one in there. We'll just set it. There you are. Look. Put in the middle, there you are, there's, these new ones aren't quite so efficient, you need to let them age a little bit, a little bit of the damp soil in, and then put that round, there you are, and the stick in. I've set three traps to try and catch him, six hours he'll feed and then he'll sleep for six hours and then because he lives underground he'll do it day and night they don't have a day and a night underground if you touch them just with your hands these traps the mole will just go round them keep gloves on if you're doing it in a lawn put some grass on top and then cover them up a little bit put a stick with them especially on your lawn so you don't hit them with the mower especially on the big lawns i should leave these for about a week and if they haven't caught anything by then, I should move them to a new position. But to get rid of him is a nuisance. As you can see, he's damaged some of the onions already. And if you don't clear them out, they'll do a lot of damage. You can put other things in the ground to deter them by the vibrate and all sorts. But I've tried all those and this is the only way it works. And I've been doing it for a long, long time now. So we'll get rid of him. Hi, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, we've had a bit of an interest in 
be spraying with, with the soapy water and I'm about to do a spray it's early evening the sun's gone down ideal time to spray so I'll uh, I'll just show you what to do I've got about what 10 litres of water in the old knapsack and I've got some washing up liquid there I've got about 12 mil which would be plenty for this so I'll just pop that in Obviously you haven't got to worry about putting your hands in it because it's only soapy water. I just wash that out inside. Now I'm using a knapsack because I like to spray the whole of the garden. But as I say if you've got a hand sprayer you could do it. You can do it with a pump sprayer. It's just do about if you think half a teaspoon to two litres of water you won't go far wrong at that any sort of liquid soap will do these are the washing up types not the body washing types don't use those I'll set it up I'll just put it on my back give it a shake and we'll go and do some spraying still a little bit of aphid you see where the leaves are curling now we're only using soap so you have to keep keep spraying even if you do a couple of times a week it, you won't hurt anything obviously when you are spraying just watch you don't get in your eyes it stings a bit pump some pressure up medium nozzle on if we can turn it that way we'll go underneath and try and spray upwards so you get the quite heavy uh, heavy concentration on that one let's give it a, a bath there we go look go underneath give them a good spray underneath get in there wash them out I've got it on low pressure so it's not going to do any damage bit round there look at this got try and get underneath plenty underneath see give them a good bath in it though there you go and I think that's sweated so we're up at the uh, outside the greenhouse at the moment just looking at the potato it, it comes out next week if it gets much bigger I'm going to need, need to get the chainsaw tacked up off but another week and we'll turn it out and we'll see what's underneath it alright we'll see you next week um, Friday today hot and humid uh, I think it's about to storm it feels like it wants to storm but I've got loads still to do. That'll be it for this week. Next week we'll do some softwood propagation. Been a little bit different. Now the garden's settling down to grow. Uh, we'll do the cutties while it, it has a week or so to grow. So that'll be it for this week. So hopefully I'll see you next week. And that's bye for now.